Hi, and welcome to the Meet the Experts session on database migration. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to take a deep dive into a handful of topics, each of them introduced and discussed by one of our expert product managers in the database upgrade, patching, and utilities group. My name is Roy Swanger. I'm based in New Hampshire on the East Coast of the United States, and I'm Vice President for Database Upgrade, Patching, and Utilities here at Oracle. You're also going to hear from Mike Dietrich, the world's preeminent upgrade expert for Oracle Database. Mike's based in Munich, Germany, and he's going to talk to you about the auto upgrade utility. You'll hear from Daniel Overby Hansen, a senior uh, principal product manager based in Denmark. Daniel really focuses on cloud migrations, and he's going to tell you about Oracle Zero Downtime Migration. Rodrigo Jorge, based in Brazil, is another senior principal product manager with a background in security, high availability, and patching topics. Rodrigo is going to talk about cross-platform transportable table spaces using incremental backups to reduce downtime for migrating really big databases. And Bill Beauregard, another senior principal product manager based here in New Hampshire, like I am, is going to talk to you about data pump best practice. Now, this is a session about migration. We do talk about upgrade as well, and migration and upgrade are related topics, but they are distinct. So what is it that we mean when we talk about migration? What we mean is moving data from point A to point B, which can be done for any number of reasons. You might be moving from one operating system to another, from one server to another. You might be changing your storage, your character set, or changing the database characteristics like partitioning, compression, or encryption. There are lots of reasons you might migrate your data. So we're going to talk about the best ways to do that. Now, migration is separate and distinct from upgrade and patching. And it pays to know the difference between those three different but related topics. When you upgrade, as you see here, you're changing the first version in your database software, going from say 18 to 19 or even 12 to, to 19. That means you're updating the binaries and then you're updating the dictionary in the database to run with those binaries. So that's usually an in-place operation and is really focused on the data dictionary. So that means the size of the database doesn't matter there. When you're migrating, you could be changing a lot more than that. You could be spanning versions that you can't upgrade directly, for example. You could change all those other database characteristics I talked about. And that means moving your data from one place to another. And in that case, the size of your data really matters but there's a lot more flexibility when it comes to migrating, as you can see here going from say 11.203 to 19. Patching is really about updating the binaries on your system and maybe some of the PL SQL packages in the database. It's a much lighter weight activity and can often be done with zero downtime if you're in a real application cluster. And patching is generally an in-place operation. So what is the best technique when you want to perform a database migration? We have lots of choices. You have data pump, transportable table spaces, a whole bunch of other techniques that could be used either to get the data where it's going or to reduce the downtime. And that's really the key here. There's not one technique that is best for every situation, but for any individual situation, it's really about what meets your needs when it, whether it comes to minimal downtime or the simplest operation because those two ends of the spectrum here are really at tension. They're really kind of at war with each other. The simplest techniques often involve the greatest downtime. The minimal downtime often involves extra complexity. So whatever your scenario, we do have the right tool for the job, but it's not gonna be the right tool for every job that you have. The key to a successful database migration is to follow this very simple set of four steps. One, be on the right version, and that means database 19C. Two, make sure you're on the most recent release update. Get the most complete and current set of security and functional fixes for your database. Three, choose the right migration method. You do have a whole bunch of different tools that you can choose from, but getting the right tool for the job in a particular scenario is very important. And then four, use the tools that are available at your disposal. Some of them are free like SQL plan management, others widely adopted packs like the tuning pack to make sure that you have good performance after your migration. So without further ado, let's get into the deeper topics like data pump best practices, which will be discussed by Bill Beauregard. 
Thanks, Roy. I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about data pump best practices. There's a technical brief on the topic that can be found on oracle.com slash database slash upgrades. It's under the database migration resources topic. I'll cover some of the highlights here, so let's dig in. First, we recommend using a parameter file. It avoids errors that come from typing long, complex data pump commands. For instance, getting the right escape character sequence can be challenging, especially if you must escape the escape character. Imagine using transportable table spaces and specifying multiple data files. It's just easy to put the command in a par file. By default, exports are only consistent on a per table basis. If you want all the tables in the export to be consistent to the same point in time, you need to use the flashback underscore SCN or underscore time in the export command. SCN or system change number marks a consistent point in time in the database that export uses to enable the flashback query utility. The best practice is either to use flashback underscore time that uses the SCN nearest to sys timestamp or a specific SCN. In either case, this allows all the data in the exported tables to be retrieved as of a particular SCN and as you may have guessed, this requires configuring automatic undo management. Another approach is to export from DataGuard. You can turn a DataGuard into a snapshot standby temporarily to do the export. Currently, it's not possible to do this with active DataGuard and DML redirect feature because DataPump requires DDL for create table commands to coordinate the export. It's important to have current dictionary statistics. We often see performance issues reported where the root cause was stale and inaccurate statistics. Similarly, it's important to collect statistics immediately after import. We recommend gathering schema statistics because we'll gather statistics on all objects regardless of the staleness information. We also recommend excluding statistics from the export job to improve performance. Alternatively, you can transport those statistics with dbms under stats package, underscore stats package. We recommend adding log file diagnostics. They add timestamps, internal timings, and access methods to the log file. It's important to enable parallelism for performance. For instance, it determines how many indices can get created in parallel. If you don't set it, then only one data pump worker process will do all of the work of creating indices. Parallel export import of metadata was introduced in 12.2 and enhanced in 21C with support for transportable table spaces and full transportable. If you have basic file lobs, we recommend converting them to secure file lobs. Secure files can be imported in parallel. They're generally faster. They offer superior uh, functionality, including compression and uh, encryption, and they're good for petitioning. Converting to secure file lobs can be done seamlessly and transparently during the migration using data pump import. With parallelism in your data pump job, you need to specify the dump file name with a wildcard so export workers can write to multiple dump files and avoid log file contention. The percent %l wildcard allows for as many file, dump files as you need. It expands file names to a 3 to 10 digit variable with name. Schema level import, uh, export is important for migrating Oracle Database to Oracle Cloud because it ensures that only permissible user schemas are moved to the Oracle Cloud database. The last best practice I'll cover is the Oracle Database 19C Super Patch. You may have found that adding changes with Data Patch can take a long time if dpload.sql is involved. This Super Patch backports to release 19C most of the known performance issues related to DP load that are fixed in 21C. This is a merge patch. It's also a generic patch, which means that there's only one patch for all platforms. However, there is a separate merge patch for releases 1910, 1911, and 1912. The plan is to eventually include it in a release update, an RU. So what are the benefits of applying the patch? Well, first, there's a substantial performance improvement. The elapsed time to install a patch via DP load apply script should run up to 60 to 90 percent faster. And in sub uh, sub uh, subsequent invocations, it should be even faster to well under a minute. Second, the number of objects that are left invalid 
has dropped by up to 90% to about 10 or less and down to zero in subsequent invocations. And then finally, it decreases contention issues because some of the DP load SQL operations have been streamlined. Just a few more details. The patch is rack rolling and standby first appliable, which means that there's no outage in a rack environment required. And it's also hot patchable. You can put it into an Oracle home within a running system. The files don't get executed until you apply a data pump patch with data patch. And that's it for me. I hope this has been helpful and over to you, Mike. Thank you, Bill. Now let us have a look into how to upgrade, especially regarding migrations. And before we dig into that, let me remind you that since Oracle Database 19C, everybody can have three user-created Plugle databases at no extra cost because it's by default embedded in every license agreement for the Oracle Database since Oracle Database 19C. And of course, the same applies to 21C as well. And auto upgrade can do this for you. So if you're not familiar with the approach, how to bring your non-CDB over into a pluggable database, it's one extra line in the auto upgrade config file. You simply define the target CDB. You'd like your non-CDB to be plugged in either after upgrade if it's 19C or plugged in first and then upgraded if you're going to 21C. Even if you are already on 19C and you've never heard of that and say, oh my God, can I do this now? I have upgrade already. Auto upgrade still can do that for you, even though you don't want to upgrade at this point. So here you see a very simple config file of auto upgrade. Source and target home are equal because we stay in the same home. We define the SID. This is your non-CDB, it's DB19 and the target CDB. Auto upgrade won't create this CDB for you. So you have to create this CDB and ideally create with, with the same components you have already in your non CDB or more components, but not less. And then you call auto upgrade with Java minus char auto upgrade char your config file, the file which is displayed on screen, minus mode deploy. And it will not upgrade your database, it will just plug it in and do then all the conversion steps necessary in order to move your non-CDB database into a pluggable database. Remember, this is our pro tip number two, always download the newest auto upgrade because the version you get from this MOS node is guaranteed newer than the one you have on disk. This is a general rule for auto upgrade, always. Now you sit there and say, Mike, I'm using multi-tenant already. So, What's in for me? This is why we added this part to our today's presentation. Unplug plug upgrade. And you see a wall in between here, in the middle, the green wall. It's different servers. So on the new server, we have a new CDB of higher release and we can let auto upgrade, unplug, plug, and then upgrade across servers. That's brand new. Auto upgrade can do this for you. Yes, this is not a question. This is why we wanted to talk about this here today. And even across different servers or VMs, yes, yes, it can. So let me show what you have to do. And it's not complicated at all, but here in this part, you need to do a few prep steps. First of all, we need a clone user. So you see this on the left side of the slide. So this is something you do now in your source environment. You create a clone user. I call it Borg and default table space. Just remember in 19C, there's no default table space in the PDB. So you may have to create this one or assign it to a different one. And then this user needs some special privileges. Create session, create plug -in database, and very important, select any catalog. And of course, once you're done, you can drop this user again if you want to. On our target environment, in our new CDB, higher version, we create now a database link going into the PDB of the source. So it goes into the PDB of the source using a TNS or an Easy Connect. And then we kick off auto upgrade. 
And here, we want only this PDB1. We don't want the entire CDB, only PDB1. This is why in the fourth line you see in red PDB1. Our target CDB is the CDB21 here, and we need to specify the source DB link. So the source DB link here going into this PDB is clone PDB1, the link I created before. And then you kick off auto upgrade. And what auto upgrade will do, it will move it over and upgrade it across servers. But this feature can do even more because we like refreshable clones a lot. So we added here the ability to do refreshable clones across servers with auto upgrade. So our PDB will be cloned over the database link, same prep steps as before, but now the PDB will be kept in read-only mode. So it's not open unless you break the mechanism. And the only difference here, you can even upgrade afterwards if you want to, but the only difference in our config file is very simple. We need to add this number behind the source DB link parameter. And 600 means 600 seconds, so every 10 minutes it will be refreshed automatically. So pretty cool feature. And finally, if anything ever goes wrong, this is so cool with auto upgrade, you just collect your zip file, your trace files with a zip command together in the first line. You add OPATCH LS inventory and the alert log uploaded to my Oracle support and support can always find out if something goes wrong. So over to transportable, Rodrigo. Thank you, Mike. Now I will start talking about the transportable method. But it's not any transportable. It's transportable table spaces with cross-platform incremental backup. So first, don't get scared by this huge name. It's a bit complex method, but extremely useful and cool. And I've already did some database migrations, some of them with for, for systems bigger than 20 terabytes in a very, very small downtime. It was about one to two hours to do the database migration step, okay? So first, this method needs your business to tolerate some downtime. It's not a zero downtime or near zero downtime method like Golden Gate. So first, your business must tolerate some downtime, but it's a very small downtime to use this method. And the good thing about this method is, is because you can do Indianess migration, meaning you can go from big engine to little engine or even the opposite. And also you can go to newer database version. So you can go from 11G, non-CDB, maybe to 19C, unpluggable database. And that's why it also supports uh, non-CDB to PDB conversion, okay? So here are some examples of platforms that run in big Endian. Uh, so we can see here, for example, you could use this method to move from AIX to Linux on Exadata, or you can use this to move from Solaris to Linux and so forth, okay? So how does it work? First, you need to have your target database pre-created. Here in, in this example, we have a 19C PDB created and empty without any data. And we have our source database running in 12.102. So in this example, we have them in different Andean format. So first thing we do, we take level zero image file backup for our user data files. What are user data files? Are all the data files that are not system and sysops, meaning are the data files where you have your user data in, okay? So we take level zero image backup from this and convert and restore and convert it on the target server. After that, we take level, we keep taking level one incremental backups. And here it's very important because the higher the frequency you have for those level one incremental backups, the lower your migration downtime window will be. And the reason for that is because we were gonna reduce the delta of the data change that we need to take in the final window, which is the downtime window, okay? So here we keep taking level one, as I said, and finally, when it comes to the migration window where we need to stop our source system, we actually put our source system in read only. The data files, we put it in read only, and we take a final level one incremental in that step. So with, with this final level one incremental backup, now we have our source and target systems aligned in the data files, okay? Finally, we take a full transportable export import in the source system and apply it on the target system. And in that moment, our, our user data files will plug on the target system and the metadata will be imported. 
okay? So what is metadata that we are importing? The final step is the user schemas, the table pointers, because the table data, we moved using the backups, right? Uh, all the columns, index, uh, metadata, triggers, build SQL code that you may have in, in format of procedures, functions, patterns, and so forth. So this method is not a fully logical method like golden data or data pump export import, neither a full physical method like migrations using physical standby or PDB unplug and plug. This city is in the middle because the user data we are moving in a physical way using backups and the metadata we are moving in a logical way, okay? So the, the metadata we are using the full transportable export import to move it. So that's why the, 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 the dump file that we move in the end is a very small dump file. So here we have a MOS note describing this method. You can go to this MOS note. We, you have access to these slides and also some blog posts, which we have the step-by-step -step of this method. So just some constraints about this method. First of all, the compatible of our target system must be the same or higher version. And we recommend you to have identical short sets and time zones, even though this can be slightly different but you need some workarounds. So again, check the documentation if you, have, if you want to have different sharp set or time zones. We also recommend you to enable blockchain tracking because this will make your level one backups much, much faster. You only take the blocks that change and put in this backup, and this will be a very fast process, reducing your downtime. And finally, if you have table space encryption, you can't go with different endings, unfortunately, in this method. However, if you have the same endings like moving from Windows to Linux, then you can have table space encryption. So the final reasons I love this method is first because the fallback option is your original database, which was kept untouched. It's only read-only. All you need to do is, is put it back in hit write mode. And it's very fast because it only depends on the final level one backup time and the full transportable export, which will move your metadata. It's cross-platform, it's cross-endianness, it's cross-version, it's cross-multi-tenant architecture. It's almost cross-anything, which makes it very easier to upgrade as well, okay? And now let's move on with Daniel, which will talk about ZDM. Thanks, Rodrigo. Now let's talk about ZDM zero downtime migration. It's an advanced tool that we allow you to use for free when you're migrating your database into OCI. Even though it is an advanced tool, it uses three simple steps to migrate your database into OCI. If you look at it from a bird's eye perspective, we first build a copy of your database in OCI. We do it while the source database is still online, meaning there is no outage. Then we keep the target database in sync by using either Redo Apply or Oracle Golden Gate. And then finally, at your will, when you are ready to complete the migration, all it takes is a simple switch over to complete the migration and allow the users to use your new cloud database in OCI. You can migrate your database using two migration methods. We have the physical migration method, which uses a combination of Arman and DataGuard to migrate your entire database into OCI. In contrast, we have the logical migration path, which uses DataPump with Oracle Golden Gate on top of that. Today, I'll focus on the logical migration method. You can use that to migrate your schemas, your data, into OCI, in contrast to the physical migration method, which takes the entire database. With the logical migration method, you can cherry pick each of the schemas that you want to migrate. Since we are using data pump for the initial load, you can also use the full flexibility of data pump. This means that for instance, your target database can be partitioned. You can transform your LOBs into the new secure file format or any of the other options that you can use with data pump. You can even go cross version and cross architecture, cross platform and cross endianness, meaning you can even take an 11204 database running on AIX and migrate it directly into a 19C PDB running Oracle Linux in OCI. 
But when I mention Golden Gate, I bet there are two things that come into your mind. One is price, the second is complexity. These two obstacles are often mentioned by customers when I talk to them about migrating to OCI with Oracle Golden Gate. First, price. We allow you to migrate to OCI using ZDM without paying a license for Oracle Golden Gate. Yes, that's correct. Go to the cloud marketplace, find the proper image and look at the details. You can use Oracle Golden Gate for six months to migrate your database into OCI with, uh, with ZDM without paying a license for Golden Gate. It's free when you migrate to OCI. And with ZDM, we allow you to use even more uh, features without paying a separate license. For instance, data pump compression and data pump encryption. Migrating to the cloud with ZDM has to be easy. Then there is the complexity part, but it's actually very easy to use Golden Gate with ZDM. First, the installation. Well, it's simple. Go to the cloud marketplace, find the right image, hit deploy, choose the tenancy, and now the OCI tooling will deploy a compute instance and do the installation of Golden Gate. At the end, you have your very own Oracle Golden Gate hub ready to be used. Then there's the configuration. It's handled by ZDM. It'll connect to the source and target database and do the proper configuration of Oracle Golden Gate. And unless you have some very advanced uh, capabilities that you want to use, there is no further configuration of Golden Gate. How about monitoring? That's easy as well. When you complete the migration, ZDM will ensure that all the changes have migrated from the source database and into the target database. If that's not the case, you will not be allowed to proceed. And if you want, you can still monitor the synchronization by logging on to the Golden Gate Hub. It has a very user-friendly web interface that you can use to quickly get an overview of how the synchronization is progressing. If you want to have more details, you should visit this blog post series that I did. It contains most of the use cases, all the details, the pros and cons of the various methods, everything you need to know when you migrate with ZDM. And it even has posts that tells you what you should consider when you're migrating very large terabyte sized databases. Go to the blog post series, get the details and start migrating with ZDM. Well, so that was a bit of a whirlwind tour through upgrade and migration topics, but I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoyed meeting the expert product managers in this area for Oracle Database. Just to remember, your key to successful database migrations, be on 19C, get the latest release update, choose the right migration method, and use those tools that are available to make sure that you have good performance after your migration. If you want a whole lot more information about this, we have a comprehensive series of webinars, both ones that we've recorded recently and ones that are coming up. You can find the links there in the presentation. We have blogs from Mike, Daniel, and Rodrigo. And of course, we have our YouTube channel on video. So we hope to see you taking advantage of all this collateral that we've produced and happy migrating. <laughs>